Hello and welcome to another quick middle of the day update. Bitcoin extremely slow, extremely boring. Um, but now is the time where we need to prepare for a little bit of end of the week volatility starting on the daily time frame. Some of you have asked if I could show the larger time frame count. Yeah, just subscribe and you will see that every few days. If you want to look at the weekly chart, then take out, take out, <laughs> take a look at our long-term video playlist. Um, I have several videos on there, the latest ones uh, in which I also talk about the Bitcoin weekly chart, but that one doesn't change often, or actually it takes ages for it to change. Um, and the patterns take ages to play out, you know, it takes ages to work through these wave structures. So I don't need to update these videos very often. So if you're interested in the weekly chart, check the long-term video playlist section out. You will also find some charts about other coins yeah also here you know on the bitcoin daily chart nothing happened really i mean this wave b here is still unfolding that's still the primary scenario um it could easily you know extend a little higher that's not even a problem it would not change anything on the daily chart um such a b wave as long as the move up is just corrective we can just count that as a b wave okay and it could even it could even extend above the July high because B waves can overshoot. Nothing I'm primarily watching for. Re standard resistance here is between 28,360 and 30,280, basically between the 50% and the 78.6 retracement levels. That is standard retracement or resistance for the B wave. But B waves don't really have targets, okay? And that's the problem. They don't really have targets. They, um, yeah, they are among the most difficult waves to forecast and some of the most yeah, frustrating waves generally. If we know that we're on a B wave, that knowledge is gold. You don't get that knowledge from any other TA method. And, um, you know, we have seen frustrating price action, right? I mean, luckily we have, uh, not luckily, but um, well, we are following a process. And because we are following a process, we stayed out of trouble in recent weeks. Um, Lots of opinions about if we go bullish, still bearish, still bullish, whatever, um, or bullish again. Um, as long as we don't have evidence that something more bullish is unfolding, and as long as we don't have evidence that a lasting low has been established on the 11th of September, I will not call that out. Um, in fact, it's expected that we break down here soon in the C wave. Um, but again, you know, if we break above micro resistances, which I will talk about now on the smaller time frame. We have to expect that this B wave is extending a little higher. Um, about the other levels, I talked about them in previous videos. The only other thing I want to mention is that in this C wave, yeah, key targets between 22 and 24K. Um, and now let's go to the shorter time frame. Here, the idea is that of this B wave high that was made early in October, we so far only have three waves down. I'm counting this move down primarily as the orange wave count in a diagonal structure. The yellow wave wave count would be an impulse, but I trust at this time the diagonal a little more just because there isn't really a very clear wave count for the yellow impulsive count. It's technically possible, but especially due to this, let's say healthy sideways consolidation, uh, which is very corrective to the upside and which would make me favor continuation to the downside. Due to this, the yellow count has become less likely, but no resistance was broken, right? And we are still within the parameters of the further downside price action that we've been talking about. The idea is that um, as long as Bitcoin stays below 27,620, the orange wave count is valid and the next move down should be a fifth wave. As you can see here, next target to the downside would be 26K. Because we're currently holding really and stopping at every micro support, I would, be, I would be genuinely surprised if we don't hold and stop at 26K. So I would expect to bounce from the 26K level and area. And from there, you know, the price, when it completed five waves down in a diagonal, this 26K level, at least it's an ideal target. It can always extend lower, but it is a level definitely to watch. Then I wouldn't be surprised if we see this ABC rally to the upside in a wave two with a third wave breakdown afterwards, which would be really when the fun starts and that would form a head and shoulders pattern. Yeah, so this wave two could form the right shoulder. So that's what I'm watching. And then it could send us really down, fueled by not only the head and shoulders, but generally by the orange wave count. And um, 
you know, when we have a head and shoulders pattern and we have a wave count and they both come together, um, then we have confluence and we can use both the probabilities from elite wave and the pattern to increase probabilities. So in my analysis, I do not rely on head and shoulders patterns, but um, obviously when I see one and we have an elite wave count that also points towards further downside, yeah, you know, if they work together, why not, you know? Um, but that's what we are watching. That's what we are watching. And they are basically the levels to watch for next week. I already added resistance for orange wave two based on the assumption that we are going to reach the 26K level. It's obviously not very clear if we will. I mean, it's assumed, but we haven't arrived there. And once we see a reaction to the 26K level, yeah, then we can make some assumptions about, okay, is this the wave five? Does it look like a complete wave one? Yeah. And are we retracing in wave two and then break down in three? So it will probably take a little while. We'll probably spend a little bit more time in this overall boring and frustrating price range. That's my update about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. If you're interested in the membership, um, every Sunday we do our member live stream at 5 p.m. UTC. You get access to Discord and Telegram, educational content and um, short-term signals and updates as a gold member. Also, if you're interested in stocks and shares and the S&P 500, check out our stocks and S&P 500 service. Link is also in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.